Here are answers to four questions about the new class of weight loss drugs. Hi there, everyone. It's Jeff, and this is Plain English, where JR and I help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. A year ago, we talked about a new type of drug, diabetes drugs that produced significant weight loss. And then on Monday, we talked about the difficulties of stopping treatment with these drugs. Weight loss drugs have exploded in popularity. Almost 4 million Americans now take them. And because they're drugs for chronic disease, doctors expect that many people will be on them for the long run, possibly for life. These drugs have the potential to play a big role in business and healthcare in the coming years. So I had some questions about them, and today's lesson is all about what I found. In the second half of the lesson, I'll show you how to use the phrasal verb press up against. This is lesson 661 of Plain English. That means JR, the producer, has uploaded the full content to plainenglish.com slash 661. That's where you'll find the transcripts to read along with each part of today's audio lesson. Ready? Let's dive in. The question we'll start with is this. How do patients take weight loss drugs? The drugs are injectable and they come in a pen-like device. The pen includes a pre-measured dose and is for one-time use only. The drugs are injected subcutaneously. That means under the skin. It's not like a typical shot or vaccine, which is a jab in a muscle. The injection can be in the abdomen, thigh, or upper arm. Drug makers recommend varying the location with each injection. The injections are once per week and should be done on the same day of every week. The pen isn't difficult to use. You swab the area of your skin with an alcohol wipe, press the pen up against your skin, and hold it until an indicator on the pen confirms that the dose has been fully administered. The pens come in a box, and the box stays in the refrigerator. Each pen is for a single dose, and after the pen is used, it should be disposed of in a needle-safe container. Second question, what insurance plans cover weight loss drugs? This is complicated. In countries with private insurance for prescription drugs, like the U.S. and Canada, the decision is up to the insurance plans, which are often selected by employers as benefits for employees. In countries with national insurance plans, like the U.K., the decision is up to the government. In the U.S., the drugs are not yet covered by Medicare, the National Health Insurance Plan for Retirees. And only about one in five private medical plans cover it. In Canada, most insurance plans cover these drugs for diabetes, but only half cover drugs specifically for weight loss. The UK, Norway, Belgium, 
and the Netherlands cover costs only for patients with the highest class of obesity. Italy and Poland cover the drugs for patients who suffer from obesity as a result of eating disorders. Germany's health ministry said it has no plans to cover weight loss drugs. Insurance coverage, therefore, is different depending on where you live and what type of insurance you have. If insurance doesn't cover the drug, then patients have to pay out of pocket. So that leads to the third question. How much do the drugs cost? Like most prescription drugs, the cost of weight loss drugs varies by country. The drugs cost far more in the U.S. than they do in any other part of the world. And the cost for patients without insurance can be $1,000 per month or more. To put this in perspective, the average household income in the United States is $75,000 per year pre-tax. A single family member on a weight loss drug without insurance would spend 15% of the average household income. In other words, this is out of reach for the average household. It's not like that everywhere. A recent study found that Wagovi costs $1,300 per month in the U.S., but just the equivalent of 328 US dollars in Germany. Ozempic is a diabetes drug with the same active ingredient as Wagovi. It costs $936 per month in the US, but the equivalent of just 168 US dollars in Japan. $103 in Germany, and $83 in France. Saxenda, another drug, costs about $100 per month in Mexico and Brazil, but incomes are much lower in Mexico and Brazil. So relative to household income, the drugs are just as expensive in those countries as they are in the U.S. Next question, why is it so hard to find doses of weight loss drugs? Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk are the makers of popular diabetes and weight loss drugs, and they've struggled to keep up with demand. That's because these drugs are harder to make than simple pills or capsules. The pens add to the complexity. Each dose requires a needle and a specialized plastic pen. All this means that manufacturers can't easily adapt existing factories and machinery to ramp up production. It takes time to get a production facility ready to produce the compounds and the pens. There are only a handful of sites around the world that are able to do it. Dosage also complicates the supply. Drug makers typically make pens with five different dosage levels, so they have to match supply with demand not only for their drug overall, but for each of five color-coded dosages. There's another reason why drugs can be hard to find, and that is 
that it's expensive for pharmacies to carry. The drugs have to be refrigerated, and refrigeration space in a pharmacy is at a premium. Pharmacies don't always know exactly how much to carry, and they don't want to store too much because it's expensive, and refrigerated space is limited. There can be some location-specific factors too. Pharmacies in British Columbia, Canada's westernmost province, have filled tens of thousands of prescriptions of Ozempic to Americans, making it hard for locals to find supply. The province restricted sales to U.S. addresses. In the middle of last year, and the problem subsided. In Mexico, you can get weight loss or diabetes drugs without a prescription at the pharmacy, or even get them delivered on Rappi, a food and grocery delivery service. But because there are no prescriptions required, many people are going on the drugs. For just a few months at a time, that means it's harder for pharmacies to plan ahead. Two of Mexico City's large pharmacy chains recently said they're either completely out or have only limited availability. I read an article that quotes a doctor in Mexico City. She's on social media, and she sees people desperately trying to find weight loss drugs at different pharmacies here, most without a prescription or without a doctor visit. She said she advises people to talk to a doctor before starting the drugs, especially since there are shortages. And there's no guarantee you'll even be able to find the drug consistently. But she said, as soon as she suggests a doctor's visit, people on social media stop responding. Press up against. This is a hard one. This is a phrasal verb that means to apply physical pressure to something so that it's in contact with a surface. This typically involves a person or an object making firm contact with another surface for a sustained period of time. So imagine you're in a crowded elevator. Going up, four or five people get in with you on the first floor. On the second floor, another two people get in. It's starting to feel a little crowded in here. Then on the third floor, another handful of people get in. Now you were one of the first people on, so where are you? You're in the back. And as more and more people come into the elevator, there's less and less space for you back there. So eventually, you'll find yourself pressed up against the back of the elevator. That means there's physical pressure. Your back is not just lightly touching the back wall; you're pressed up against it. There's firm contact between your back and the back of the elevator. You are pressed up against the back of the elevator. The same thing can happen on a crowded bus or train. During rush hour, you might be pressed up against the walls or the doors. In the same way, if you go to a crowded concert. You might see fans pressed up against the stage, 
trying to get as close as possible. If you're not in the front, you might be pressed up against other people. That means you're not gently grazing the other people around you. If you're pressed up against other people, it's crowded, you have no room to move, and there's firm contact between you and other fans. Epic fail. Listen to this. I bought sound absorbing panels for my office to improve the sound quality of these audio lessons. So I bought these 3M hooks that go on the wall, no tools necessary. You've seen them. Here's how they work. You attach adhesive strips to the hook. Then you press the hook up against the wall so the adhesive strips stick to the wall. You press the hook up against the wall. You apply firm pressure so that the hook is in contact with the surface of the wall and you keep the pressure on for a full minute. Presto, worked perfectly until they fell down in the middle of the night. If you get blood taken, they'll probably give you a little cotton ball or gauze pad after. Press this up against your skin, they might tell you. They want you to put firm, sustained pressure on the gauze pad so you can heal your skin. Weight loss drugs come in small, injectable pens. To administer the drug, you press the pen up against your skin until the dose has been administered. The important thing with press up against is that it's for a sustained period of time. It's not just for a moment. In that crowded elevator ride, you're pressed up against the back wall not just for a moment, but for the rest of the elevator ride. When I attempted to hang my 3M command hooks, I had to press the hook up against the wall for a full minute. It was sustained pressure for some time. And if you administer an injection via a pen, whether for weight loss drugs or for an allergic reaction, you press the pen up against your skin and you hold it there until the full dose has been administered. There's no time limit to use press up against, but the idea is it's sustained pressure for some period of time. Well, that brings us to the end of today's Plain English. Thanks for sticking with us until the end. This was lesson number 661, so the full lesson content can be found at plainenglish.com slash 661. Now, speaking of the full lesson content, we have rearranged things at plainenglish.com. And now there's so much more right on the transcript page. And we have added a quiz to each expression. So take the four question quiz on the transcript page to make sure you understood press up against. And while you're there, if you're a plus member, you can write your own examples of press up against, and I will give you personal feedback. That's all at plainenglish.com slash 661. And that's all for today. We'll be back on Monday with a new topic. See you then.